subscribe our channel press the bell icon for latest videos hi friends here in this video we are going to see the concept of direct and bending stresses so let's get started Now to explain this concept, I will draw the diagram first. Here there are two columns which I have taken. Now these are the axes of the column. In the first example, I am placing a load on the axis. Load is denoted by P. And in the second example, I am placing a load which is away from the axis by a certain distance. The distance between the load and this axis is denoted by small e called as eccentricity. Now in the first example the load is passing through the axis so it is called as an axial load whereas in the second case since the load is away from the axis, that is called as an eccentric load. Now in the first case, because of the load being axial, that is it is compressing the column along the axis, there will be only compression inside this first case, that is inside this column. Because of the axial load, there is only compression. Whereas in the second case, when the load is eccentric, there would be compression as well as bending. Why bending? Because this load is acting in the downward direction. It is at an eccentricity E from the axis. When I take the moment about the axis, that would be P into E. And because of that, there would be bending. So when the load is eccentric, there is There is direct compression as well as bending because of the load being eccentric whereas in the first case it was only compression. So when we have such a case that is where we are having direct compression as well as bending then the load P is eccentric and therefore there would be direct compression so the direct stress would be given by denoted by sigma D load upon area and bending stress in this case is m by z and this formula came from the flexural formula or bending equation that is m upon i is equal to sigma b upon y when this y gets multiplied with m and then it would be going into the denominator of i so i upon y is called as z so the final formula of bending stress is m upon z. So whenever the load is eccentric we are going to get both these stresses and at the same time there would be a maximum stress denoted by sigma suffix maximum and there will be a minimum stress denoted by sigma suffix min. Now what are 
the concept behind these maximum and minimum stresses for that we can see this diagram that when the load is applied here I am assuming two corners for this column like here there is a corner A and this is corner B so when this load is eccentric and since it is near to corner A then the column would be bending because of the moment it would be bending along this direction and after bending it would be somewhat like this it can either be lifted from its foundation because of the moment acting in this direction so as we can see in this diagram the point number a is pressed to the ground whereas b is getting lifted when a is pressed to the ground it means it is getting compressed and due to bending also it is getting compressed at point a so at a we are going to get the maximum stress which is direct stress plus bending stress whereas at point b since it is getting lifted here it gets lifted because of tension since the column is being bending along this direction so point b gets lifted and when it is lifting there is tension at point b whereas a is getting compressed so tension t and here there is compression c tension is not allowed in case of column because the column will be lifted from its foundation so we do not want this condition so sigma min is sigma direct minus sigma bending so whenever the column is designed it is desired that we don't get this condition that is tension should not be allowed in the section at the base if there is compression is there it is feasible compression can be there inside the column because that won't result in the column coming out from its foundation but tension is not required it means this sigma min value should never be negative because in this chapter of direct and bending stresses compressive stresses are taken as positive whereas tensile stresses are taken as negative so the condition should be such that we should not get negative stresses that is tension in the section and the unit of the stresses are same it is newton per mm square so in this video we have seen a concept of direct and bending stresses at the end if you'll find my videos helpful you can like share comment and subscribe our channel and share it amongst your family and friends thanks for watching